It's good. It's actually great that everything changes. Hello, I'm author Denise Turner. I'm the author of the book uh, Love Pour Over Me and Spiral. I'm actually going to talk about a concept that is I share in the book Spiral. It's a murder mystery, but this book it was I wrote it to share certain truths with people uh, that hopefully we can make better changes that not only impact us but our entire family and towns as what happens in spiral what happens to this town <laughs> you'd have to read the book but unbelievable how people what their concern with causes them to overlook something that caused some very innocent folks their lives so one of the things I want to talk about is it's a good thing that everything changes. <coughs> and you are watching, before I go on, you are watching the Chistel, C-H-I-S-T-E-L-L dot com YouTube show. So this week, it's good that everything changes. Change is a part of creativity. You can't create without change. Impossible. Can't be done. Without change, there is no manifestation or create creativity reward. So if you think about the terrifying, horrible, lonely, unwanted experiences, et cetera, et cetera, that you have been in and you may be tremendously happy knowing that, that change is a part of creativity. It's just a part of it. When things are going really, really bad, I heard somebody say once, trouble don't last. I said, trouble don't last. And there are situations that as nations and individuals we've been in that people probably thought this will never end. And it's over. So change is a part of creativity. But if you think about bad things, you're like, whoop, glad about that. But if you think about happy experiences that you've had and relished, hold your little baby in your arms and then the kid grows up and goes to college, or a relationship, the way it starts, is so exciting. You just feel like you're floating in a, on a cloud and you want it to just last. You want a friendship to last. Don't leave. Don't go off and get married. Don't leave. Let's keep our friendship the way it is. And some people fight really, really hard against change. If they have a friend get married, they will suddenly start really, let's go to the strip club. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. I don't want the change. They're like, I don't want it. So I'm trying to keep you where you are. But if you think about a happy experience that you relish, you might be disappointed that change is a part of creativity. So change is not a sign that we are not in control of our lives, that we have no input or influence over what we experience. Even with change, we get to pick how we will perceive a person, an experience, an emotion, a thought. The key is to remember that all living beings are sending out requests all the time. All the time. Every living being is part of the creative process. Creativity flows naturally when there's no fear. Fear is like a block. They say it's like darkness, uh, it causes confusion. I mean, just fear. Not an evil force, fear. So creativity flows naturally when there's no fear. But fear causes us to feel like we need to hold on to an emotion. I can't let this piece go. That's how sometimes we run into uh, addictive behaviors. And I'm talking about a brain change, but soda uh, or just exercising overly, over and over and over again, almost too much. Anything that becomes addictive because you're trying to hold an emotion and experience a person, an event, is why we grab the rails of a car the door rests, et cetera, when we aren't sure what's coming next. Experience something over and over, regardless of how startling, and you may not brace yourself for the event anymore. You come to expect it. It's, there's no change involved. You may simply expect it and respond to the event unconsciously. Mm, it's no big deal. This is where growing accustomed to fear can impede the creative process. Some of us grew up in, around abuse and we're used to screaming, hollering, people throwing things. No big deal. You take somebody who grew up around nothing but peace, they would be in a probably a state of panic in that situation. Now the Tilson family is a great example of this. 
Their story is told in Spiral. Fear for this family starts as it does with many individuals and families. It's rooted in fearing that others don't value you. And that is because we don't value ourselves. And we're just projecting it out. I don't value me. I'm projecting it out. I can't accept that. So I'm saying you don't value me. But the real issue is I don't. When I do, I won't care whether you do or not. The road to fear as in spiral. There's some really powerful people in this book. Upstanding people. You'd be shocked at how they get tangled up in fear. The road to fear can be quick and easy. The path out is not always as quick. Oh, is it? And I think about crossing the, in the scriptures, the Red Sea. There's so many stories. The road in, pretty easy. Getting out. Mm. Which is why it's best not to start down the road of fear at all. A lot of people go into bad relationships for fear they can't make it on their own. They end up in a horrible, abusive relationship. If you want to see what happens to the Tilson family and how they get out of the dark, Consider reading Spiral. Thank you. See you back here next week.